The philosopher Seneca said that most men ebb and flow in the wretchedness between the fear of death and the hardships of life. They are unwilling to live and yet they do not know how to die. From an early age, I realized that everybody dies, but not everybody lives. And growing up, my greatest fear was not death, not failure, but living a life of quiet desperation. Living a life knowing that I could have been more, but I chose not to follow that path. I chose not to see how far I could go. There were so many people that told me to get that corporate job or take the path that they had taken, right? But when I looked into their eyes, I didn't see any fire. I didn't see living life to its fullest, right? What I saw was a dissonance. I saw a dissonance between who they knew they could have been and who they were embodying or who they were showing up as in the world. Seeing that, I hated that sense of desperation, but I started to see it in myself. And at 23, I had a corporate job. I was considered a success by the people I grew up with, by my family. But when I went to that job every day, I went there every day and I realized that I wasn't happy and I was not going to push the limits of my potential in that container, in that environment. I chose an entrepreneurial path and in a lot of ways kind of jumped into, into the frying pan and told myself to figure it out. And I, I struggled and I failed multiple times, but along that way, I discovered a person inside of myself that I never would have tapped into if I had stayed in that environment. Quiet desperation is just fear. It's that subtle darkness, that chasm between who we are in the present and who we know we can be. And I believe that fear, that desperation, that dissonance, it characterizes my generation because we live in a world where we can see material success, we can see ideal lifestyles all around us on social media. We're constantly driven to become something else. We're constantly told that we're not good enough and we have to get to this point to make it. But it's really in that process of becoming the person that we need to be to feel like we've made it, uh, that we actually discover who we are. We actually discover what we want and what our potential is. And if we're willing to look at our darkness, look at the parts of our lives that we don't like, look at how we're being complicit in creating the conditions that we say we don't want, and really sit down and push the limits of our potential, force ourselves to break down, and build ourselves back up and face everything, it's in that process where our darkness starts to define our light. And on the other side of that darkness, we find ourselves living a life that at one point we could only have dreamed of.